Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of content at Script, Pink Sheet, and In Vivo. We're here in Copenhagen at uh, Bio Europe 2018, and I'm joined by Julian Vess, who's the chief business officer of a French uh, CNS company, Theranexus. So, uh, Julian, the CNS space is a very, very difficult place for uh, you know companies to sort of develop new drugs. So, you know, particularly, it must be very difficult for you know, sort of uh, startup companies principally because the preclinical models are not that predictive. So you know, why, why be in this space in the first place? Yeah, uh, thanks Mike uh, for uh, this interview and giving me this opportunity. Uh, I would say that to, to answer your question, uh, indeed, that there are many challenges that we are facing into this space. Um, still, this being said, uh, we have uh, at our nexus uh, made choices that we believe are allowing us to overcome these challenges. Uh, first choice is the technology itself that we have that is uh, based on uh, understandings uh, cross-talk between neurons and non-neuronal cells that are glial cells in the brain and understanding how these glial cells are managing the microenvironment of neurons so that they are more or less responsive to, to a drug. And this allows us to come with combination. And the choice that we have made into the combination that we have is to start with a CNS drug, which have proven its efficacy in man, which have reached the market. Okay. Uh, and then we can look backward at each steps of the development it has taken from clinical trial design to animal models, and then mimic the same step and look at how our combinations are able to improve the efficacy of that CNS drug in that context. So that to answer your question about animal models and productivity, that is definitely a challenge that yeah. we are facing. Uh, we get rid of that thanks to the fact that we are not looking at the model because it's a model of Alzheimer's disease, of our narcolepsy, of whatsoever. We are looking at the model because it's a model which we know is responsive to the right. CNS drug we are aiming to improve. Right. And then we are looking at how the combination boosts the efficacy of that CNS drug and how we can get superiority in terms of efficacy over the standalone drug. So, 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 so what you're saying is you're almost using sort of real world data because the, one of the active components already has sort of shown efficacy in, in a real real world setting. Exactly, yeah. Okay, and so the combination is an existing uh, neurological drug. What's, what's the other part? What, what, what's the other part that kind of promotes that microenvironment to make the, uh, the, the, the neurons respond better? So the, the other part basically, uh, we have developed a, a screening technology that allows us to identify drugs that are targeting a specific protein called connexins in astrocytes, so a specific type of glial cells. Right. And by targeting this specific protein, we are able to, to manage this microenvironment, basically by playing on networks of these astrocytes. And the choice that we have made, again, is not to go for new chemistry, but it's to go for drug repositioning for this part of the yeah. combination. Again, basically to save time cost as well as increase the chance of success because uh, we don't have to perform all the preclinical regulatory admit and so on studies that you need to do before moving to man. We can move directly from proof of concept in animals to proof of concept in man and within a, a very fast uh, time frame. And basically, the nexus that was created only five years ago yeah has already three drugs now in clinical development, with the first one being already in phase two, with a phase two that is now close to the end. Okay, so you've, you've, you've been able to turbocharge the development of those clinical programs because of the approach you're taking. So, so let, well, let's talk about the, the three programs you've got. So the, the LEAP program is in, in, in what indication and, and what's it a combination of? Yeah, so the, the LEAP program that is coded THN102 is a combination based on modafinil. So modafinil is a psychostimulant, a weight-promoting wow. drug that is used for the treatment of sleepiness in 
in uh, narcoleptic patients. Sure. So this is the first phase two that is ongoing and for which we should get results now in a few weeks from now. So that will be sort of the end of November 2018? That should be more towards the end of 2018, so more toward the end of December. Okay. So maybe uh, we'll see, but it's, it's yeah, more towards the end of 2018. And basically, so uh, this study uh, is close to the end. We have enrolled the last patient. We are doing our best efforts to get cleaning of the database in parallel to the last patient being, uh, being tested. So this is uh, how we expect, we hope that we get the results uh, at that timing. So then uh, on top of this study, we also have a second study uh, with the same uh, clinical candidate uh, that is in uh, sleepiness in Parkinson's disease. So actually in Parkinson's disease, there are more and more awareness about what is called non-motor symptoms. And one of the leading non-motor symptoms is sleepiness. So about 30 to 50% of Parkinson's disease are suffering from that in a similar way to what is experienced by narcoleptic patients. Yeah. Uh, and this study is ongoing, and for that phase two study, we should get a readout uh, in uh, mid 2019. Okay, so, so you got your first two programs are essentially the same combination, yeah. but in slightly different indications, yeah. but still sort of focusing kind of on sleepiness of, yeah. of, of one form or another. The, so as we um, so, you know, look forward, in both cases, you're you're looking for some superiority over the standard of care, is, is, is that how it so works? Re regarding the first trials, for phase two trial in narcolepsy, uh, yes, definitely. Right. There is, it's an active comparator trial. There is no placebo and we are looking to prove the superiority of the combination of modafinil alone. Regarding the second trial in Parkinson's disease, actually there is no standard of care because right. there is nothing labeled in that indication. So we are comparing then there to the placebo. Okay, and then the third program is in a sort of the controversial area of neuropathic pain. And, and we know that, you know, that sort of, uh, you know, hit the sort of the, I guess, the, 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 sort of the normal press, the sort of the regular press in terms of, sort of what's called the opioid crisis. So, so what's your approach with that? So our approach with that definitely is to <laughs> head out of the opioid therapy and offering to offer uh, more potent, more effective drugs that are not based on these um, opioid pathways. Uh, so basically, the choice that we have made is to look at what drugs were available in that field, in the field of neuropathic pain, and what was the one that was described as being robust in terms of efficacy and in terms of response. Because the main need there is really the response. You have only about 20% of the patients uh, suffering from neuropathic pain, taking a drug and declaring that uh, they get a relief, a significant relief of the pain thanks to the drug. So it's really about improving responsiveness. And uh, in that case, the basis that we have chosen is a tricyclic antidepressant that is called amitriptyline. It's a okay. quite an old drug yeah. uh, and uh, vastly generic, um, but still with no promotion, you have about 20% of the patients with neuropathic pain that are taking that drug. So it's, it's the one that is described as providing the best response. So we have decided to go from this basis and improve that with a combination with another drug that is on the market as well, but that we repurposed with a significant change into the dosage compared to the, its original indication. And, uh, and, what's, and what's that drug? It's mifloquine. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and with the combination in models that are responsive to amitriptyline, yeah. we've been able to show a very significant improvement on both key symptoms of uh, neuropathic pain that are allodynia and epiralgesia. Right, and, and, and you're expecting a sort of a readout of results what, when? So for that study, actually, we are still in the preparation of the phase two study right. because it, it will be quite a large study, uh, more than 300 right. patients involved. Uh, and we are to launch the phase two study uh, in uh, Q2 2019. Okay, okay. And 
you've done you did a venture financing uh which was, was just kind of discrete small venture yep. financing and then uh, last year you did an ipo raising yep. about 20 million euros yep. um do you have the sort of the financial wherewithal to be able to sort of you know, move these programs forward or you know what how are you going to support yep. these these clinical programs so today we we have actually uh, three drug candidates in development in four indications so we've spoken about uh, THN 102 in right. narcolepsy and uh, in Parkinson's disease. We have a second program that is coded THN 201 that is based on donepezil and be now in a proof of concept study in uh, dementia. Right. Uh, and then we have the third program in neuropathic pain. So the fundraising uh, with the IPO uh, was designed to allow us to take uh, these programs to the next step of development, having in mind that for uh, the neuropathic pain assets, we would first go into a kind of proof of concept study in health fibrillantes. But we've decided to accelerate this development and go directly to phase two. And this means that uh, in terms of funding needs, we are in need of six to eight million euros to fund this large phase two study that again will involve more than 300 patients. Uh, to fund that, uh, I would say that we are looking for first non-dilutive funding. We've been quite successful in the past to attract this kind of non-dilutive funding. We will then hopefully uh, expect to use the proceeds of uh, an agreement that we might get on the first asset, THN 102, following the phase two results in narcolepsy. Uh, and third, have a follow-on uh, fundraising on the stock exchange market uh, to fund this uh, part of, uh, of the program. Okay, so it sounds like you've got a busy year coming ahead. Yeah, 2019 will definitely be a transformative year for Ternexus. Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Well, thanks, Julian, for- Thanks a lot. Back.